In no small number of ways, what's old is new again. As proof, consider this postcard from the British County of West Sussex from David Pogue. For over 200 years, Charlie Burrell's family has lived in Nepp Castle. Anyway, so here's some of the... About uh, an hour from London. Members. So that's the guy that built the castle, and he married an heiress. Look at her. She was an heiress and very beautiful, and there she was marrying this boring <laughs> academic with no money. The castle sits on 3,500 acres of land. I'm the 10th baronet. And does that carry with it certain rights and responsibilities? Not really, no. <laughs> um, I mean, in certain circles. It but he was responsible for the estate and the farm when he inherited them in 1983. It's so hard to remember. For 17 years, he and his wife, Isabella Tree, tried everything to compete with modern industrial farms. The spraying, the new technologies and new crops that were coming on. But the wet, heavy clay in the soil made efficient farming impossible. We were 1.5 million pounds in debt by then. So it was really looking desperate. And then, in 2000, they learned about a new idea in land management called rewilding. That's where you give away your land to nature. You stop plowing, irrigating, mowing, applying chemicals, and you let wilderness return. What has been absolutely astonishing is how quickly nature has bounced back. So from being one of the most depleted sort of pieces of land you can imagine to being one of the most important biodiversity hotspots in the UK. After 20 years, NEP now teems with an incredible variety of plants, animals, birds and insects, some of them endangered. The rarest species in Britain, turtle doves, nightingales, purple emperor butterflies. We have peregrine falcons nesting in a tree, which is almost unheard of. What I wanted you to see was the first breeding storks to be back in Britain for 600 years. And there they are. So that stork would not have been here when you guys arrived? No. The last time storks nested in the UK successfully was 1416, <laughs> the year after the Battle of Agincourt. And he is king of the castle. <laughs> oh, man. To kickstart the transformation, the couple introduced a few heavy critters, like cattle, horses, and pigs. They rootle, they trample, they debark trees. The way they spread seeds from one area to another in their hooves, their fur, and their gut. If you put these animals back into a landscape, they can create habitats again. Take, for example, this ancient breed, Old English Longhorns, where generations of the same family roam free. So the, the great, 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 great grandmother will be there, and then all the daughters. Excuse me, we're working here? <laughs> so do you feed them anything? No supplementary feeding. They're just finding whatever they need from this landscape. Some of these cows will become beef for sale. Burl and Tree say they produce tastier meat because of their natural diet. Cows don't just eat grass. They eat plants and twigs and leaves. Once they're eating what nature intended them to eat, they metabolize much, much better. In the wood, over there. A few minutes later, we came across these red deer enjoying some shade. Those antlers are pretty incredible. Aren't they amazing? To us, they look really outlandish yeah. on, on a red deer, but that is probably naturally what they would grow to if they were allowed to live in their most optimal kind of habitat. Quite often we see them just submerged in water. So if I read about a red deer in a, in a book, it might not note that they are river creatures. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's only when you allow rewilding for habitats to naturally emerge that then you have species showing their innate natural behaviors. So in some ways, what we're seeing here is what we might have seen a, a thousand years ago. Maybe 10,000 years ago. The pigs are also changing the landscape by starting a chain reaction. There's mom. Oh my gosh. These are hairy pigs. The pig, is, by its rootling and its opening up of the ground, has allowed things like sallow, which is a food plant of purple and butterfly, to then flourish. And to top it off, the Nep estate now generates more money as a wilderness than it ever did as a farm. 
We have ecotourism, tree houses and glamping and camping and, and African safaris. And that's now a business that brings in about a million a year. The rewilded land does a favor for surrounding farms too. It's going to provide clean water. It provides that crop with pollinating insects. It's going to provide physical buffers against extreme weather events. Down the road with what's happening to climate and what's happening to biodiversity loss, we need to have hot spots for nature. We need to have corridors running through our landscapes for nature. The NEP story is a big deal in the UK. The couple has just published a guide to rewilding. And the British government is funding additional rewilding programs, thanks in part to Alistair Driver. We've got an ambition in rewilding Britain of 5% of the country by 2030. About a foot down in here. He's the director of Rewilding Britain, a nonprofit devoted to attracting more government dollars and more landowners to rewilding. We know that 56% of our species are declining. We have a biodiversity crisis. We have a climate emergency. I mean, we've got to do something different. We cannot continue the way we are. Today, rewilding projects are underway in more than 30 countries around the world. Most of the countries where rewilding is going on are those countries which have inadvertently screwed things up for wildlife. We need to start reversing this decline where man and nature can work more together in harmony. Rewilding may be the future of the Nepa state, but it's a huge break from the past. What would he say if he knew that you'd taken the farm he labored to create and let it go to seed? Yeah. So I think we're very pragmatic in this family. So from the pragmatic standpoint, he might have said, dude, you've doubled the estate's income. I'm not sure he would, dude, would come <laughs> into his sort of 18th century brain. But you know, I get your meaning. <laughs> <laughs> Dude.